Hi, this is Robert Kane with Arcane Training and Consulting. If you work with PowerShell for any length of time, you're going to wind up working with various file types, including XML. In this video, we're going to see just how easy it is to have PowerShell work with XML data. We're going to have PowerShell read in a file, and I'm going to show you how to make PowerShell recognize that the data is in XML format. We're going to see how to update an entry in that XML data set, how to place new entries into that XML data set, and then finally write that XML file back out to disk. So without further ado, let's take a look. So here we are inside the ISE or Integrated Scripting Environment. Everything I'm going to show you, you can also do inside a PowerShell command window, but the ISE makes it easier for demonstration purposes. Also want to point out a couple things real quick. If I highlight one or more lines of code, I can come up here to the toolbar and click the run selection, or I can press the F8 key to execute that code. I will be using the F8 key a lot during this presentation. Finally, if I click on just a line of code and I don't have anything highlighted and I hit the F8 key, it will highlight that particular line and execute just that line of code. And what line of code did I just execute? Well, all it's doing is it's loading up a variable with the path and name of an XML file. In this case, it is a books.xml file. And we can look at the contents of it by using the psedit command. If you're not familiar with it, psedit will open up a file inside the ISE. So if I simply hit F8 again, and let me maximize the script pane, and you can now see I'm looking at the contents of my XML file. This is a series of books. You can see the parent collection is catalog. Within the catalog, we have individual books. Each book has an ID, and then we have the author, title, and so forth. So let's close this, and we'll return to split screen. And next, we're going to look at the command that actually loads the data into memory. As you might expect, we're going to use git content to get the data. The key to making all of this work through is the XML strong type declaration in front of it. You may be familiar with the ability to strongly type variables inside PowerShell by using a strong type identifier. It could be string, int, or so forth. Well, with XML, if we use the XML strong type identifier, this is what tells PowerShell, hey, this is XML data, and it opens up a lot of extra commands we can do with it. So I'm going to run this command, and it's now loaded that data into Books XML. Now let's go here, and one of the features that the XML opens up is Select Nodes. So if I run the Select Nodes method off my Books XML, and I'm going to pass in the slash slash title, this is XPath style syntax, you can see we have a list of all of the titles from our books.xml file. If I want to run just a single node, I can come down here and I can say I want to get the first book in that collection. So here it is. BK101 is the ID, the author, title, and so forth. Now I want to point out that with XPath, it starts numbering at one. So you can see in brackets, I have book bracket one that tells me to get the first book. If you're familiar with PowerShell, you'll know that most of the time collections are zero based. So that's just a little important thing to note. If you're using XPath style syntax, one based. For any objects, it's zero based. All right, so that was selecting a single node. Now, you might think, well, if I want to get access to the catalog, I could just use booksxml.catalog. Well, what happens is it returns me a collection of book objects. So the catalog has a collection of each of those individual book objects. If I actually want to get them, I can actually say booksxml.catalog.book, put it out to format table, and this returns all of the books in my catalog book collection. You can see 101, 102, and so forth. 
Now, if I want to get a single book from there, I can again use array notation catalog book, but I am now zero based because I'm in the PowerShell world at this point. And now you can see what I actually have is BK102, which is the second book out of my collection. Now what I want to do is update one of these books and memories. Matter of fact, why don't we update this BK102 book to become a completely different book? So here I am saying books catalog.book bracket one for the first one. I'm going to set the author property, the title property, genre, price, description, and then I'm going to print out what is currently in memory. All right, so at this point you can see it's updated the in memory object. Be aware though, at this point, it's only in memory. We haven't written this out to disk yet. To do so, we're gonna save the changes. I'm gonna set a variable name that has where I wanna put the file. And then I'm gonna access the save method off my books XML variable, and I'm gonna pass in where I want it saved. We'll then open it up in the ISC editor. Now let me come back over here so you can see the full thing. And now you can see BK102 has opened up to the PowerShell MVP Deep Dives book that I co-authored. Pretty cool. What if I wanted to add a new node? Maybe I have another book that I need to add to this collection. Well, that's pretty easy. What we want to do is we want to copy one of the existing objects to create a new one. So you can see I've taken books XML and I'm referencing the first book out of it. And then I'm just using the dot clone method to create a new book variable. I then set the various pieces of information. And we'll come here. And now we're going to use a method called append child, which appends this to my books XML collection. And let's go back. And now finally, we're going to write it out to a file. I'm setting the file name that I want, and this is going to be the appended. We'll use the same save method, and then we'll open it up using PS edit. We'll scroll on down to the bottom. And there's our new book, BK201. And this happens to be the SQL Server MVP Deep Dives book that I co-authored. And that's really all there is to working with XML. The key is, once again, strongly typing the data that I get in as XML. Once I have that, it opens up XML objects, which gives me things like select nodes, save, and so forth that I can work with. Well, I hope you found that useful. If so, we'd appreciate a like, share, or subscribe. Also, be sure to check out my website over at arcanecode.com info to get a complete listing of all the content that I have available. Thanks for watching.